Okay, so now we're on to the G13 block, which is, yay, a simpler one. So I have my pieces here. I have my curved pieces already cut out, and then I've got five squares, and then my little half moons. Now the arrows, I put the arrows on it after I laid it out because I have fabric that looks different any way you flip it around. And because I'm ridiculously picky, I want to make sure that it all lines up at the end of the day. So all of these will end up being the same direction, and I did the same thing on these guys too. So that this one will all end up being the same way. I do this when I lay it out at sorting, and I will be doing videos for the bag sorts as well. So then you end up with all this. And that way you end up with a block that has the fabric all the same direction. Now my background fabric is not directional. The leaves just go wherever. So I'm going to baste this straight edge with glue. And I'm going to baste these three edges with glue. This inside curve is going to be done with glue base, but I'm going to notch it, probably two notches here to here, and then fold it in so it doesn't wrinkle. The outside of this curve is going to be basted with a gathering stitch, not glue, because it gives it a nice smooth curve that you can easily assemble to this piece. Okay, so I'm going to baste these pieces, and how I do this is I'm going to paste all these corners down, or the sides down, and then this top piece, and then I take my scissors, and I snip this, and then I'll take my glue pen, and I'll do just the edges, and I'm pulling down so I don't get it caught, and then I will fold this up. And it can get a little poochy here, but that's okay because when I baste, when I connect it, I will pull it down. And I'll do that for the rest of these. So I'm going to do these next. And I've already basted the flat side. And I'm going to make sure that my knot is on the paper. So I will take it, start here ish and I will pull this through and then I will come out here and I'll do a gathering stitch and I'll take my skin with it because it's what I do apparently and I'll usually take about three of these and then I'll pull it Oops. see told you mistakes and all so I will do this all the way across this piece And as it goes, you can see it's pulling itself in. And you're probably wondering what happens when you get to the end. Because I was the first time I saw this. Excellent thought. I try to stay near the outside rather than the paper just because then it's easier to stitch to the other piece when this thread's not near it. So I'll go to about, I think I'll take one more stitch. I'll go to about there and I'll pull it through. And I will actually pull it Go make it go through the paper to the front, and it will pull it. And you're going to get that. You want to kind of pull it that tight and then loosen it up so you know it's tight enough. But in order to get a crisp edge, I will come in here and I will pull it down with my needle and hold it with my finger and stitch it again. 
over the whole length. And this one's small, so it's really bulky. Because I have a thicker reproduction fabric or whatever this is. It's scraps, so I've had it for a while. <laughs> So now I'm halfway, and you can see the difference, maybe, in how this is curved and the fluid movement, and this is lumpy. So I will finish this. Oops. I'm telling you, this makes all the difference in the world when it looks when you're doing any kind of an outside curve. I do this for my applique pieces. I do this for what I classify as my B row of curves because it seemed like B had like four blocks in a row that had outside curves on them. So this is my lumpy area and I'm having a heck of a time getting this in here. My needle's thinner. Sometimes I'll get my stiletto out and just manhandle it. Okay, and then I will come behind here and just come under here and tie it off. That way, when I go to remove the basting, I, have, I, can, I can do it from the top and not take the papers out. Okay, so I got all my pieces gather basted, I guess would be what I call it. And then I have um, connected them with tape. And you can tell that they're not exactly lined up. But what I'll do is I will start it at the corner. I will make these line up when I start stitching. And then I'll do it in a little bit. And then I'll tie off. And then I'll do the same thing over here. And sometimes this will bow up on me. But it's okay because at the end of the, end of the stitching it will lay flat and it will lay flat when you take the papers out. And then as I baste my squares, this is my squares, so I first I do two sides, and you don't have to do it this way, this is just the way I do it. I do two sides and then I do the opposite sides. The reason I do that is it just seems to be easier to take the papers out, but it's really not that big of a deal. And then I'm going to make sure that I lay this out in the right direction of my fabric. My fabric sits up, so I'll pick one for the middle of these, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to stitch these together next. Okay, so I got my bits put together, and I've got all this laid out with my directional fabric, and I'm going to put these together in pairs down this edge, and then I'm going to put these together in rows, and then put the rows together. Okay, so now I have all my rows are put together, and I'm going to tape them together and make them one big block. Now that I've got my block made, I'm going to cut out my basting. So I'm going to snip my, my knot out. I got two knots, so the first knot should fall out quite easily, and then these all have to be pulled out manually. And it's if I use the right tool, maybe we'll be okay here. And then I pull the second knot and it pulls it all out. And I will do that for the other bits that I haven't done yet, and my block will be done. <laughs> 